Hello there. Let's talk about Miss International. I'm always planning. I've always been planning to attend the Miss International pageant because I'm in Japan. And Tokyo is just one hour away or one and a half hours away from my place. But this year is just another year that I cannot attend it because it falls on a Tuesday. I have work early in the morning on Wednesday. So, as early as now, <clears throat> as early as now, I am confirming that I won't make it again. Sad. <laughs> but we just can't, you know, we just can't have everything. I'd like to thank everyone. We are now on our way to 35,000 subscribers and my other channel my lifestyle vlog channel is gonna celebrate its uh, 50,000 subscribers most probably within within a week so maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat now as miss universe is crowded with great beauties miss international is just the same we have great beauties this year this year is going to be an exciting year once again. And this year is going to be full of surprises, as always. <laughs> if you say that Miss International would be full of surprises, that would sound cliche because it has always been like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, you know, among the big four pageants or big five, you know, including the Miss International, it is the pageant that always has unexpected results. Yeah, I think so. If you would like to share the biggest surprises and the biggest upsets at Miss International, please comment them down below. And it is also one pageant where a lot of beautiful girls didn't make the final cut, or the top five in particular. A lot of those girls who have this Miss Universe potential did not place at Miss International. The nicest thing to say about Miss International is that it has its own character. It is original. It goes with the flow, but it retains its vintage grandioseness. It's grandiose. It is, it is amazing that all throughout these years, you could still see some gentlemen or ladies doing some trafficking on stage. <laughs> you know? Paving the way for the candidates. Where to go? Where to where to where to walk? Where to exit? Where to enter? They are basically escorting these girls, and you wouldn't find that kind of image to other uh, pageants. And you know this old touch, I think, is their amulet or power to maintain its good standing in the pageant world. We might get bored sometimes, we might ridicule it sometimes, but the fact remains that Miss International remains relevant up to this day. Now, who lead my rankings this year? Who are my top favorites this early to win the Miss International crown? Let me give you first my insight on the following girls. Number one is our very own Philippines. The last time I saw her was when I told myself, who is that girl? <laughs> she and the other queens were interviewed by uh, the Philippines number one uh, talk show host, Mr. Boy Bunde. And I was really amazed with her look. She was different. I was not, or I am not exaggerating. I was really surprised. I didn't notice her. I was really surprised. Well, during her first interview with Boya Bunda, she, she told Boy that she was experimenting or she was playing with her looks to fit the Miss International pageant. And with that statement, it is very clear that she and, you know, and the rest of her team believe that you really don't have the exact formula 
or the exact look how to win the title. So you just do everything, you know? Be innovative with your looks. Be creative with your style. And just perform great on the finals night or during the uh, preliminary competition or during the preliminary activities. Impress, you know, at Miss International, you don't only impress the judges, you also impress the organizers. I cannot say the same uh, to Miss Universe and Miss World. I think it applies to Miss World as well. I don't think that happens at Miss Universe. I believe that it's only the judges who matter most, who really determine the winner. Unlike the Bilibini Pilipinas that you have this hint, I'm not sure if there is a solid proof that Mrs. Araneta would just, you know, get the results of who topped the pageant, like the top eight, and then she would just be the one to put this girl to Miss Universe, put this girl to Miss International. We really don't have solid proof for that. It's just a hearsay. I don't know, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong. If it is confirmed that that is the way the winners are chosen. Madame Stella just has the sole right to distribute the girls to their respective agents. I don't know. But I think that Miss University is, you know, basically from the judges. You know, we're talking about the results. It is only the jury who determines the winner. There might be some influence in the air that might affect the standing or the results, but I think it is very slim or it, it is beyond possibility. Well, I don't know. But at Miss International, I strongly believe that there is, I hate to say that this is politicking, I just think it is, you know, you have to impress the Japanese jury and the Japanese organizers, so you have to look Japanese in a way. And that's why, even though I believe uh, Patricia and the, her team is very much aware of this fact that you don't know what, what you're up to. Is they are still doing everything to play you, to play with their looks, to determine which would best suit her. When she faces the jury and the organizers that in any way would make her appear Japanese, in a way. Sort of that. Uh, in other words, make her beautiful with that Japanese aura. That it's not only through makeup, but, you know, the way you move, the way you smile, the way you project yourself, the way you face the cameras, the way you talk and bow and everything, you know, sort of that. Mm -hmm. Now, Patricia has a big chance of making it through. I find her pretty, even from day one. That's why she had been my top, one of my top favorites since the beginning. And I even placed her for Miss Universe. But with this kind of look, she can never go wrong. A little sensuality was added. She looked sexier and more, you know, desirable. Uh -huh. She is kawaii here. She is sophisticated there. She is fierce here. She looks like a lawyer here. <laughs> because she is. <laughs> For international friends, she is a lawyer. What I mean is that she is in a, what do I say, in a corporate look at times, you see? So she could easily change or transform from one look to another, and all of those looks look good on her, does it? So I think she has a chance of being our next Miss International. Next is Miss Mexico. <laughs> I am a fan of Miss Mexico at Miss Universe, even though her gown was basically, well, well let's admit the fact that those look like curtains. But if for, to others, for me it was not. It was an art because, because I like the girl and everything just didn't have effect at all, however negative it is, because I like the girl. It's always like that. The, the, you feel that way too sometimes. It's not about being biased because even though you, you know, even though I liked her, I didn't put her on top of the rankings. But I included that one in my best in guns because of the execution. So I have a point there. <laughs> However, trash that might be, you know, the gown, I could still save face. I could still say that, well, I was not wrong to include her because she gave a nice execution. Lusot in the Philippine lingo, Duba. <laughs> 
And one thing more, I think it is a strategy. In 2007 and 2009, they have won Miss International. And both of those girls were losers at Miss International, at Miss World, and at Miss Universe. Not basically losers because the one in 2009, I think, was one of the finalists. Let's take a look. Let's review. Where is that? Wait. Yeah, so we have Ana Gabriela Espinosa Maraquin who was Miss International 2009. And Leticia Murray and Priscilla. Priscilla Perales Elizondo, Miss International 2007. Silvia Priscilla uh, was one of the finalists, of the 10 finalists, okay, at Miss Universe in 2006. And she was crowned Miss International in 2007. Other girl is, pardon my voice, it's a little bit hoarse. I'm not a horse, it's just my voice. <laughs> All right, so Espinosa was, uh, yeah, she won a semi-final semi spot in the 2008 Miss World, and she eventually won Miss International in 2009. Will they make it again? Is it a wise choice for... Mexico? Well, it is undeniable that, you know, even during the Miss Universe pageant, I think she deserved, yeah, to be given a spot at the top 15 or top 16. I think so. I would just eliminate... <laughs> and I would put her through. I'm not really sure about this uh, Tokyo Award. I think Miss Tokyo Award was given to Venezuela. Let's see. Let's confirm. Because I have talked about that and somebody contradicted me. She, or he told me that it was Miss, letter E, letter E, letter E, Miss Ecuador, who was given that honor. But let's check. El Tokyo Award goes to Colombia. Yeah, I see here. El Tokyo Award goes to Colombia. El Tokyo Award is given to that uh, hyped candidate who was very strong in the beginning, but didn't make it in the end. I think Miss Mexico, Andrea, Andrea Tokuyo. <laughs> and they get to me, you know. Toscano. I'm sorry. <laughs> and yet Toscano should be, you know, should, should have won that award. Because she was strong. She was stronger than Miss Columbia, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't really care about this award. If you think that's Miss Columbia, then go on. I would respect you. But I'm just speaking of the one who was stronger during the Miss Universe pageant. And I think Miss Mexico was stronger and gave me a shock when she didn't make it. So will she be the next Miss International? Who knows? Another one is Miss Indonesia. It is the very first time that I really liked an Indonesian girl representing her country to Miss International very, very much. I like her. If she was representing the Philippines, if she is a Filipina, she's representing the Philippines, the Miss International, the Miss Universe, I would definitely root for her. So she's great. I, I watched her video talking in English and I was impressed. She's bubbly. She's beautiful and bubbly. She always smiles. She looks different from the other Indonesian girls, you know, in any pageants. Because she, she I don't know, but she has this different aura. Maybe because of her international background. Yeah, because she's half American. I think she's educated in America. She grew up in America. She looks free-spirited, like an American girl, like open-minded and you know, expressing what she feels. She looks approachable. She looks, you know, she looks gorgeous. She's just charming and so on and so forth. And her resume is loaded, super loaded, super impressive. Look at that. She has even built her own nursing care. Her advocacy is towards elderly and people with disabilities. She's a model and more. So I like Miss Indonesia as well. Way, way better than the other Miss Indonesian girls who competed at Miss International. If she wins, I think there would be little bashing from the solid pageant supporters of other candidates. Yeah, because she's... She's got what it takes as well to be 
Miss International with her beauty and grace and good communication skills. So here are the other girls who are worth mentioning. Let's go. Uh -huh.